Hello everyone, this is Layosh. Welcome back to Life Study Library. Today we're going to continue our discussion about self-help. And if you are familiar with at least a little bit of my content, then you would know that uh, this particular industry, these advocates of uh, positive affirmation or giving your best at everything, these people hate me and I do not care in the slightest. And I don't really care about making fun of this industry, so I'm going to talk about something that I think is kind of novel, which is a scientific claim that self-help might benefit some type of people, specifically the topic about gaining confidence and building self-esteem. Stuff like positive thinking or imagining your success might work for a certain kind of people, but the truth is kind of tragic. According to a study done at places like the University of Waterloo, it appears that these self-help advices about gaining high self-esteem only works on people who already have high self-esteem, and it will backfire for people who and it will backfire for people who have low self-esteem, the ideal targets that self-help media are supposed to help. In this channel, I'm going to be talking about these interesting scientific and psychological information by implementing data from scientific studies. So if you're interested in watching this video and want to watch my other videos from my past and my future content, then please subscribe to my channel and that will support me tremendously and will make me very happy. Thank you for subscribing and let's continue with the video. So the reason why these self-help advices about positive thinking and how to build confidence and you know build uh, high self-esteem only works on people who already have high self-esteem and doesn't work to those who have low self-esteem, the reason why this happens has to do with a phenomenon called the confirmation bias. In brief, confirmation bias is about people believing what they want to believe, thus rejecting any new evidence that contradicts their prior image or their beliefs. This tendency to reject any contradicting information will lead to an increased conviction about the prior beliefs that they have. One example where the confirmation bias can be seen is when the flat earth believers will not only be unconvinced by the evidence that the earth is round, but will actually have increased confidence in their prior belief that the earth is flat even more. And the reason why I talk about this bias is because it applies to today's uh, topic in the same exact way. And what I mean by this is that people who have a pre-existing negative judgments about themselves, so people who so people who already have a low self-esteem, will actually reject any new information that contradicts their belief. And this new information is the self-help advices, stuff like thinking positively or imagining your success. And to further support this, we're going to move on to the study which took 68 samples and asked them to write down any thoughts or feelings they have right now and divided them into three groups the control group so that they can see any differences, the people who were deemed as having high self-esteem, and those who were deemed as having low self-esteem. So the control group, the high self-esteem group, and the low self-esteem group. And what the researchers did to the two self-esteem test groups is that they asked them to repeat the statement, I am a lovable person, for approximately four minutes. And then the researchers measured the self-esteem and the current mood for all of the groups by asking, how do you see yourself right now? With different categories of perceptions like good, bad, pleasant, unpleasant, valuable, useless. So they measured the sample's perception of themselves after they repeated the statement, I am a lovable person. So they were seeing if these type of positive self-affirmation commonly used in advices about buildings high self-esteem. They wanted to see if this had any beneficial effect on any one of the samples. And the result provided evidence that when people with low self-esteem were tasked to repeat the statement, I am a lovable person, their self-esteem did not increase, but actually decreased, which is kind of sad. And to clarify, like I said before, the reason why this specific statement was chosen is because it represents the essence of positive affirmation or positive thinking, emphasized in most self-help media. The thing about uh, thinking about positive stuff about yourself, whether thinking that you're lovable, successful, or attractive, that kind of stuff. And the result in the study proves that this strategy does not work. So to put it into numerical values, you have the high and low self-esteem groups that didn't do the positive self-affirmation activity, and then the high and low self-esteem group that did do the I'm a lovable person activity. And when their, and when their mood and self-esteem scores were measured, the low self-esteem group had a total decrease of 15.28 points, while the high self-esteem group had an increase of 10.99 points. This proves the irony of positive thinking and positive self-affirmation because the main target for this advice are the people with low self-esteem, right? Because, you know, confident people don't need all this advice. But in reality, the commonly advocated self-help technique of I can do this mentality is not only ineffective, but is actually damaging to those with low self-esteem and are seeking to become more confident. And then the researchers did another study 
where they conducted the same exact study, but when they measured their current when they measured the sample's current self-esteem and mood, this time they told the, this time they told the participants that it's okay to choose either positive or negative statements, although we encourage you to choose a positive statement. So after the samples repeated the positive affirming statements, they were essentially given permission to choose negative adjectives during the self-esteem and mood assessment if they felt like it. This was done in order to eliminate the possible pressure that the low self-esteem participants might have had during their first study. Like I said before, when people are shown evidence that contradicts their prior belief, when the participants, specifically people with low self-esteem, when they saw the, the positive statements in their assessment, their mind might have immediately rejected the positive adjectives, believing that it was not true. So the adjustment in the second study was done to allow the low self-esteem participants to focus more on the negative adjectives, stuff that affirmed their prior beliefs, because they are determined to be low self-esteem. Now they have the choice to pick their affirming statements, rather than solely facing off the contradictory statements, which are the positive adjectives. But even in this form, their moods and their self-esteem actually got worse, just like the last study. And what's kind of ironic and sad and funny all at the same time is that these positive self-affirming statements only seem to boost the only seem to have a boost on the high self-esteem participants, those who were already confident about themselves. But even that boost was very minimal. So in conclusion, these positive self-affirmation and positive thinking strategies that are commonly taught in these media are quite ineffective to say the least, if not harmful if you view yourself as anything that includes pessimistic or low self-esteem or if you know yourself to be lacking in confidence by default. And in contrast, Positive thinking will benefit you if you seem to be generally optimistic and have high self-esteem, but this bit, but this but this increase will be only minimal. So you probably shouldn't be spending that much money or time on books or lectures or classes that talk about how to boost your confidence and become more successful. And I know that I said this strategy is not effective to unconfident people, but if you think about it for a second, but if you th but if you think about it for a second, most of us are not confident or unconfident about everything. Most of us have some stuff that we feel good and most of us have some stuff that we feel good and competent about, while there are things that we struggle and don't seem to click as easily. I may see myself as talented and good at swimming, but not in lacrosse. And honestly, I didn't even know how to spell lacrosse until I searched it up, I'm so sorry. But anyways, uh, this means that this positive self-affirmation and positive thinking is at least somewhat effective, not only to just confident people, but might also be effective in situations where you are feeling confident. Therefore, the message is, that in specific situations where you are feeling confident, positive thinking and positive self-affirmation might boost your confidence and self-esteem a little, even if you are overall low in confidence in most other areas of your life. And vice, those who are generally high in self-esteem and confidence, these people might benefit from cutting on their positive thinking juice when they are doing like, a, like an unfamiliar challenge or anything that's beyond their expert capability, or assuring experience slash knowledge. And with that suggestion, we've landed on where I wanted to land, but I still need to talk about this one more important thing. I've left out the what now part. So what now? Most people, I assume, want to be confident in areas where they're not confident, not the other way around. Being more confident in areas that you're already confident is not your priority. And if these positive self-affirmation and positive thinking doesn't work, then what am I supposed to do? The alternative is something called the ACT, or the Acceptance and Commitment Therapy. To explain it very briefly, ACT is basically a form of therapy where you accept everything about yourself. This means your, your flaws and your successes. This means you open up rather than fight to the unpleasant feelings that you have and pretty much develop your psychological flexibility using a technique called the Mindfulness Strategy where you become more focused with your present actions and emotions, which will allow you to change or keep the behavior that will lead to improvements of your overall life. Honestly, way more effective and beneficial than simple positive affirmation or, or positive thinking, for reasons which I can't even start myself with. And again, this is just a brief, brief, brief explanation of what the ACT is. So, if you're interested in learning more about the ACT, then I recommend a book called The... Uh, the Confidence Gap, A Guide to Overcoming Fear and Self-Doubt by Dr. Russ Harris. I have the link to the book down in my description so you can check that out for a read. And also, I've already made multiple videos talking about how solely trying to build confidence will actually backfire on you, which I've talked about in my further detail on why this is the case, along with videos about people not needing motivation to accomplish their goals, which you can also find on 
which you can also find the links in the description or at the comment section. So I suggest you check that out as well. So that's pretty much it for me. Thank you for watching. You've been listening to Life Study Library, hosted by me, Lai Yosh. I'm so happy that you took interest and watched this video. If you want to watch more of my past and my future videos, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for subscribing, and I'll see you in my other video. Bye now.